All right. How many of y'all took 80 to get here tonight? By a show of hands, by a show of hands. You, 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 okay. Be honest. How many of y'all were speeding? Thomas. Thomas. <clears throat> I, see a, I see a couple liars, okay. How many of y'all saw active officers on your way here? Anybody? You? All right. Well, we have one. So what if I told you that you experienced something, what I would consider a rare occasion? What I'm trying to say is that there is one police officer for every 2,000 people in this city, when on average there are typically 2.5 officers for every 1,000 people. Now, of course, that's considering the whole police department and not every cop is on shift. Now, the Vallejo PD has 87 sworn officers, some working overtime, some working full-time, maybe when they can't. And keep in mind that Vallejo has eight beats or large areas to cover in the city. Now, we do not want to defund the police, but we do want to give them the necessary tools in order to make them become successful in the city. Now, we can all agree that being a police officer is a very stressful job. With so few police officers protecting our city at one time, it creates this, this heavy burden for them to carry on their shoulders. And with their job being as stressful as it is, and having severely understaffed, being foyable is inevitable. As of 2014, Vallejo has been involved in more fatal officer shootings than its much larger neighbors, Oakland and San Francisco, combined. As you know, Vallejo is much smaller than these two cities, so the fact that they are responsible for nearly 30% of murders in our city is sending the wrong message for what they are meant to do for us. To understand the many questions that arise from this, we must turn to Vallejo's backstory. Now in, now in 96, Vallejo Island military base was put under President Clinton's base realignment commission. This cut bases from Sacramento to Vallejo and other areas. Now later in 2002, Vallejo claimed this base and then it was officially shut down. The tax revenue, the tax revenue and even the economy depleted and it left Vallejo with a serious, serious issue. Vallejo officially filed for bankruptcy in 2008. Uh, in bankruptcy, cities are only allowed to balance the budget, pay, pay like legal bills, and pay off bonds. Vallejo's problems preceded the 2008 financial crash, with its most salient issues being the unemployment rates skyrocketing to 15% and the housing prices rapidly being devalued. These changing priorities led to our public municipalities being reduced in their funding, such as our fellow police department. Our police department has gone understaffed as they have gone from 155 active officers to now 87. This has created a loss of hope in our city and also has created a lack of public service. Now we're all familiar with the Willie McCoy incident of 2019 where officers fired 55 bullets at McCoy in the span of 3.5 seconds, which was deemed reasonable by Vallejo's hired consultant. And not only this, but since 2010, there have been 19 killings from Vallejo police officers. Nineteen killings. In fact, that is the highest per capita rate in Northern California for any police department. And not only that, but $15 million have been paid in lawsuits against the VPD. Now recently, Open Vallejo has released an article pertains to how Vallejo leaders pledged to introduce 45 new reforms to the department. This was reviewed by private consulting groups and even the California Department of Justice themselves. However, these leaders have blown past these deadlines on all but only two of these reforms that they promised. This 
along with the economic struggles of our city, have resulted in a, in a strain between the police and the community it protects. However, our project has come up with a solution to put an end to all this anguish. We have been working with a nonprofit entity group called Common Ground to assist the city in providing alternatives in creating an improved police oversight system. This oversight system is something that the people have been trying to establish for the past 20 years now. This oversight model would effectively check the power that goes within the police department, in particularly with active officer situations. This would either be done through an independent auditor or a watchdog committee that would review footage, officer behavior, and reports that may pertain to the situation at hand. Now, working on this project for the last two years with these guys, we have met with the former police chief, Shawnee Williams, touring him around this school and discussing it with him key issues that affect high school students like us. As a group, Chase, Nick, our mentor, Mr. Imperador, and I attended a council meeting with the collaboration of Common Ground to urge the city to move forward on police oversight. The former chief of police, Johnny Williams, was on board regarding our ideas about police oversight. Suddenly, the chief of police resigned. Lastly, we're giving this talk before you tonight so that not only you, but our fellow students on campus can become better informed of the issues that plague our community. We hope that through our talk tonight that we're able to create awareness as well as increased civic participation. Now, moving forward with this year, we will not stop until we, until we implement an official oversight model voted in by our own city council. Currently, we are making steady, successful, forward progress into making this happen. And we ask for your support to help better our community and our law enforcement. Now we would like to invite you to join us in a moment of silence for all the victims of the police misconduct. Thank you for your time.